I still think we're the most important band in the world. Without a doubt, otherwise I won't be here. It's about listening to summer in two years' time and going, hey, it still sounds good now. There's not one person in charge, you know what I mean? Everyone's writing and I think people will see a different band. You can't go in the ring with Sugar Ray Leonard if you think you're not going to knock him out. Come on then, let's see how good you are. Let's see how far you can take him. It's been a rough old ride, but we're here now. <laughs> Makes you want to get back out there again and, you know, be done with them all, you know what I mean? Oasis jet-powered the revival of British guitar music in the 1990s, but it's been a long while since they were truly supersonic. All that's about to change with their sixth studio album, Don't Believe the Truth. We're all just into what we're doing, more so than any, any other time, you know what I mean? We've proper graphed them up here, you know what I mean? It's constantly in, out, in, out, in, out. Every track is classically Oasis, and their quality control is back after three albums where the focus went astray. We're in a position to go, been that, it's not quite right. Our sound's a bit more grander and a bit more bigger and a bit, I don't know, it's a bit more, I don't know, it's a bit more real, you know what I mean? Gem Archer and Andy Bell are contributing fully and their stability makes the band a more balanced unit. Noel remains the linchpin, but he doesn't have to carry the weight. You know, all right, it's great Noel wrote all the songs in the past because that's where we wouldn't be here now, you know, if we were all dicking about writing songs we'd probably still be wherever, you know what I mean? Now it's just like, right, with all the rules are out the window here, let's just write the song. I don't, yeah, I don't know if they'll blow them away, I just think it'll be, you know, it'll be a little bit of a change for people, you know what I mean? Bonard and Gwigsy never showed any interest in writing anything. There was never, yeah, get on this, N not once ever. First thing I said to Andy, the night we met him, before he came up to rehearse with us, he was going, so what will I be doing? I was like, you'll be playing bass and you'll be writing songs. Ooh, what? Oh, ooh. And I kind of think that they might have been overwhelmed at first. It's like, look, don't write Oasis songs like you think of them. Write some songs. But this time round, I just wrote songs. It's funny that they've turned out being, like Noel says, pretty Oasis sounding. I think that's just what, that's just the way I write. Andy's a great songwriter, so is Gem. You know, without them, we'd be kind of treading water a bit. They've brought a lot to the band, you know what I mean? Musically and personally, they're top lads. Andy's kind of getting into it now, do you know what I mean? He's offering more as a songwriter. I'd come off the road, felt like, oh, forget about music for a while, and immediately started writing. I think that's, that's how it works. So the first song was Turn Up The Sun. I worry about Andy when he sends you stuff because you think he lives in Sweden, it's always dark, <laughs> Viking, ah! you know. The phrase love one another came out of um, George Harrison had died the, the previous like winter, like end of 2002 I think, and apparently his last words or his last sort of statement was love one another. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Because I had these two songs and that with Keep the Dream Alive, I gave the tape with both of them on to Noel and... Instantly. Well, they were definitely going on the record. You never worry about him. Again, we never worry about because you'll be sat here and Gem will play some stuff and you go, what's that? What, you know, what's, what's that you just played? Oh, it's one of my tunes. Sing it. And you just go, that's... It was like that with um, A Bell Will Ring. Gem is, is the the right-hand man for, for Noel and Liam and for anyone else who, who needs him. He's always there from the first to the last every day. In GEM, Liam has found his own sounding board and someone who can help him express his musical ideas. I can't really play the guitar. I can't, you know, I can, I have these ideas of these tunes and I'll get the verses and stuff and then go, oh, it should go like that, blah, blah, blah. And then GEM will instantly pick the chords up, whereas Noel really don't, he's not around for that, you know what I mean? He's, you know what I mean? Gem and Andy love what he does, I mean we all love what, what he does, but they will spend more time trying to get stuff out of him than me because I'm always immersed in bits of scrap paper. Believe me, I must create.
I can go, oh, maybe we should go like this, and Gemma will get it instantly, and then we'll go in and record it. There's only a certain times I can come up with the whole structure of the song. I said to Liam once, so I don't know what we were talking about, but it literally was, oh, what did you used to do? And he went, man, I was in the pub. Literally, you know. And now he's there when something's not sounding exactly how, he, how he's got it in his head, and he's trying to sort of get it across to you, and he's trying to help him get it out. His talents are starting to shine more and more now. Um, he's writing more and more tunes. You've got to write your own, man. You've got to feed your own habit, haven't you? So that's basically why I started writing. He shows a side of himself in his songs which he doesn't often show in his public life, you know. And it's brilliant, you know. Love Like a Bomb. Great idea for a song. It's great. It's, it's almost like a songbird for this album. You know, Songbird was my favourite on the last album. This is, again, a, a, a really beautiful Liam tune. Noel has increasingly come to respect Liam's songwriting ability. Me and Gem do it, we go away with a CD each, we play it Andy Bell, he buzzes off it, come down and play it Noel, and then get, we'll get a call when we're making a record, he, and then I find out, he'll go, oh, what do that tune that you've done and that one, what about that one, and, that one, and that's it. I've seen Gem in here with Liam, Liam singing one of Gem's songs, and Gem stood right beside him with the same sheet of lyrics, going, yeah, but on, on that line, you've got to do a thing like that, and Liam's going, right, of course. Songbird blew my head off when I first heard it, because it was that simple. I can hum a song on a dixophone and make and make one up, easy, like that, without picking the guitar up. He's got probably more songs tucked away than anybody else. There's, there's loads. We stopped, we, you know, we didn't... Last week I was up here demoing songs, you know what I mean? So Liam, how many songs did Liam write and definitely maybe? You know what I mean? Oasis may be back in the groove, but recording this album wasn't easy. Early sessions with electro producers Death in Vegas had to be scrapped before the band rediscovered what really made them tick. Towards the end in Cornwall, when I privately I was saying, I said to Gem and Andy, we haven't got songs here, you know, there's no point in being here, and there's no point in trying to make a record and put it out because in six months' time we won't even be able to listen to it. And it wasn't anyone's fault. I mean, Death in Vegas did a great job of, of, of what they normally do. We tried to do our best in that studio, but it did, didn't happen. Come back from Cornwall going, right, hang on, you know. We went to Olympic, and then it started sounding good again. Come back here, done some stuff, and then my mind seems to sort of shoot to... Where do we go then? Relocating to Capitol Studios in Los Angeles, the band returned to what they do best, making timeless rock and roll records. Dandy Warhol's producer Dave Sardi offered a fresh perspective, and working in the building where the likes of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr. and Nat King Cole churned out hit after hit can't have hurt. We went to Capitol Records and went in the basement and spent a bit of time there, I think about two months, and just collated all the ideas that we would had up till then and some of them flew down and some of them were a little harder to get the spirit we wanted because we love these demos as well so much. It's really hard, you know. So everybody who's ever even been anywhere near being in a band that understands that. They were even inspired to consider some 1950s influences and a pretty lo-fi approach. Remember that old Buddy Ollie sound like... Really. And that you're getting it on the snare and that was... Too rocky, so we got this old box of I don't know what it is out in America, like Cheerios or something. We got that on it, and he's just got these spoons that he bang, and it gives it this kind of it's like a bit more percussion than a snare. You could be my best friend, stay up all night long. Because there's so much information out there now, everybody purports to be telling the truth, and there's that so much shit on the internet, I wouldn't believe any of it, none of it. Make your own mind up. The truth. I mean, it's always been important with us because we're not a bunch of, we're not liars, we don't fake it, it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? It's just a title name, isn't it? I'm still trying to get my head around it myself. Playing live will prove whether the new songs stand shoulder to shoulder with the old. Find out in part two what Oasis think about their sold out summer tour and how you can win tickets. For years, Noel and Liam were more than happy to be seen as Britpop street fighting men, but now the aggro and attitude has mellowed. They're older and wiser. Even doting father Liam seems to enjoy domestic life. I'm not afraid to write a 
song about nice things in life because life can be nice. It's not always dark and at the end of a pint, you know what I mean? I'm not afraid to write about love. If that changes you, then so be it. But I don't think it changes your music or anything. You'll be hard pushed to find an influence on this album beyond 1967, and that's what gives it its heart and soul. There are shades of Dylan, The Velvet Underground, The Who, The Rolling Stones, and inevitably, The Beatles. Oh, it's total John Lennon to fuck without a doubt, but it's art, it's good, man, I'm having it. There's some, you know, some nice little numbers on there for the ladies, then there's some out and out rock and roll songs on there. Well, I did come into the band going stones, 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 but I think at the end of the day, Liam's got a lot of time for the Stones. And I, I, I don't think it was me that started that off. I think he's always, he's always been into this. The meaning of soul is ferocious, isn't it? You just want it as raw as possible. And um, it doesn't mess around, really. I think it's done in about two minutes. To me, it's like Elvis in Sun Studios, 1956, like Hound Dog or something. And it's just like right in your face. It's like Liam after five brandies, you know, which I, I've got on first-hand experience. <laughs> <laughs> the mean the soul is Liam through and through really. He always plays the guitar as if he's trying to saw it in half. I haven't been in a big Dylan phase for a long time until actually it has been all brought back by this album. Obviously it's all very Highway 61 influences going on. Let the Beloved's a classic, I love that. The other one he's got, Mucky Fingers. Another conscious thing was not to do as many guitar solos, because he's just got sick of trying to be John Squire, you know what I mean, which none of us are. It's got an amazing harmonica solo on it that Gem plays, which you think, you're not sure what it is. It starts off like a guitar, and then it sounds like a, a, an underground train break. It ain't Love Me Do, anyway. It was just two days of piano, bashing really, very, very velvety and just, you know. In fact, I think we, we tried to buy a piano especially for that, one that was falling apart, and everybody kept sort of saying, oh, we got one here for like five grand. And Noel was going, oh no, I'm looking at about 80 quid. And it's got this keyboard on it that I bought for 50 quid. Found it on eBay. Jason Rhodes, our guitar tech, got it down from the fifth, fifth floor of a block of flats, <laughs> put it into the back of his Land Rover and brought it back. Let's go. I've been three other songwriters in the band who, who were on the same wavelength as you. It's dead easy, because if you play something, you say, oh, I'm not sure about this, and two instantly go, that's the bollocks, because then you go, I knew it was. Noel's still the sign-off point, man. You know, we're all doing our thing, but it's not like he's, he's got people around him who he thinks are going to come in with something that he's not into. He wants you to bring in stuff that, I would assume, is going to make go, oh. But, you know, it's like, there's going to be no keyboards on straps <laughs> in this band. To me, I put it together as an album, and it's taken, to get to the running order where it is now, it's taken nine various goals, and I think we've pretty much nailed it. I don't think the pecking order has changed at all. I mean, Noel is the guy who takes most of the responsibility on his shoulders. You know, he'll be the one who has the final say about stuff. It's all got to hang together as an album, and you always get interfering from your record label saying, some idiot has worked out the first single's got to be within the first three tracks because when they listen to it in the record shops, their mind's already wandered and all that. It's like, well, come on, Led Zeppelin never done that. You know, the Beatles never done that. It's not control as such, but he's the man with the, with the armband on. Tickets for their UK and US tours, including New York's Madison Square Garden, sold out in record time. As a live draw, Oasis have few rivals. There'll be another Manchester homecoming, of course, and you never know, at this time, they might even take Manhattan. Madison Square Garden selling out in an hour is, is one of those things that, you, you know, your, your life flashes before your eyes in a way. In a way. You don't, I don't take any of that for granted at all. I don't think the boys do either, really. We're all a bit like, yeah. With these gigs selling out, I didn't think they'd sell out that fast. That's blown me away, and I'd like to say, well done. I was doing some radio interview the other day. So I'm at Madison Square Gardens in an hour. First question this guy says to me is, Hi, you're live on 
QF9202 in New York State. So, no, do you think Charles could have done a bit better than Camilla? That's what you join a band for, for it to be like that and suddenly end up doing it. I hope every kid who picks up a guitar gets near that. Every time I've gone to America, I'd give it my all, as if we were in England or anywhere else, you know what I mean? I've never gone there half-heartedly and gone, oh, yeah, these Americans. I've gone there and give it 100%, you know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to getting over there and doing a bit of that. And, you know, if we become massive, then we become big. If we don't, I'm still happy. Gigs, which are, you know, life-changing, like Wembley was one of them. That was amazing to do that. It's a moment in life, you know. I have a feeling that it will be like that with Madison Square Garden. The people that come to our shows over there, they see it for what it is, you know. You guys are a great rock and roll band. That'll do me. I just want to get on the stage and do some great gigs and it'd be a success and get back and do another record. Yeah, I'm ready to go, man. I've been ready to go since last year. I'm looking forward to rehearsing, going through that motion, you know, oh, that's not working, that ain't working, this is working. Looking forward to the lot, man. I can't wait. Small ones, big ones, whatever. I'm looking forward to getting my bag ready and getting on the bus. If people want to come and see our band, then I'm there, you know what I mean? For that hour and 45 minutes, in that space, that microphone, I'm away. Straight out of the taps. I love it. Singing, man, is my, my thing. So I get my release, man. I get more of a release out of singing a song than I do writing one. Like Noel's, one of his phrases is, um, it's not space jazz, and it ain't. It's about getting the feeling across, you know? It's like, who cares if it was acoustic on the record but you got a Telecaster now? All we're doing is just trying to get to the chorus, man. It's quite an inspiring story that, you know, you come off a council estate and you end up being the bone and find your big ba you know, biggest band in the world. If, only for about a year, but still, you know, nobody can tell. I went never with Madison Square Gardens. And that means something to young people.